This video explains how to draw interactive line plots using the Plotly package in the R programming language. The tutorial was created in collaboration with Kirby White, who is a researcher at the Seattle Pacific University and an absolute expert when it comes to interactive graphics in R. So without too much talk, I'll head it over to Kirby. Hey everybody, Kirby White here to do another Plotly tutorial. This time we're going to talk about line plots in R. So let's go ahead and jump right in. If you need to install and load the packages, go ahead and use this code. We're going to be using two different packages in this tutorial. Plotly for our graphing and TidyR, which provides one function just for manipulating the data set that we're going to be working with. I've already loaded those, so I'm not going to run it right now. And the example data that we're going to use for this tutorial, you can build right here. So go ahead and pause this if you need to recreate it. Um, the first one that we're going to build is stored in a wide format where we have one column with four different dates, January 1st, April 1st, uh, July 1st, and October 1st. And then for each date, there's a different measurement for three different variables. And so we're going to go ahead and build that. And here's what it looks like in more of a spreadsheet view. Pretty straightforward. And what we're gonna do is take that same data set and use the pivot longer function from the tidy R package to convert it into a wide, uh, I'm sorry, a long format. So this is what the exact same data set looks like, but it's been pivoted so that there's uh, multiple rows for each date and a single row for each measurement and date combination. If you're not familiar with wide versus long formatting, I highly recommend you go look into it and learn about it because it's very, very useful to be able to convert your data sets from wide to long and uh, back again because different packages and functions um, tend to have different preferences for the way the data is formatted. We're gonna work with both of them in this tutorial because both are very common. So in Plotly, the way we create a pretty basic um, line plot is we use this Plotly function, and don't forget the underscore that's in here. And we're gonna tell it to plot the data from the DF wide object, which we've already created. And we're gonna map the date column to the X axis and variable A or var A to our Y. Now this is only one of our three measurements and we'll add the other two uh, next. We tell it that the type of plot is a scatter and that's because line plots are a variant of scatter plots. You can think of a, a scatter plot, which has dots all over the place, and a line plot is really just when you draw lines between those. Now, we often use line plots to represent something different. Um, uh, very often it's time series data. And in English speaking cultures, we tend to represent earlier dates on the left and more recent dates on the right. Now in some cultures or languages that's actually flipped so you want to be aware of your audience if you need to um, to flip it so that the uh, more recent data is on the left instead of the right. But here is a basic line plot that we have. We can see it October 1st um, the value for variable A was 15 and on April 1st it was 20. Fairly basic line plot here. Now if we need to add the other columns, still using our wide data set, we're going to essentially uh, rebuild this plot that we're currently looking at, but we have to add this name argument here. And this is really just the name that we're going to use in the legend. And then we use add trace, which is a function um, to essentially tell Plotly, add more data to the same graph. Um, in Plotly terminology, they would call that a trace. And what we're gonna do when we add new data to it is we're gonna map variable B to the Y axis and give it the name variable B. And then when we do it again for variable C, um, we just replicate that same information, that same pattern. And this is the line plot that we get now. And it has automatically changed the color of each line for us so that it's easier to keep them apart. But this is how you create a line plot with multiple measurements over time when it's structured in a wide format. What we're going to do now is plot the exact same thing, but using the long structured data set. Uh, we still have date going to our x-axis, y um, uh, is in a column called value that used to just be the name of the um, measurement. And what we're going to do is simply map the name um, column to the color of it. Now I'll, I'll give you a quick refresher. We have date, 
name, and value. Those are the names of our three columns in this long, long data format or data frame. So we'll go ahead and plot this and it takes just a moment to load, but it actually looks identical. So you can see the same information um, that's on here. And so hopefully this gives you an understanding of why we might prefer wide formats to long formats sometimes. I'm gonna use the long data set for the rest of this tutorial, and, except for the very last one. So let's go ahead and I'll demonstrate what it looks like in Plotly to change the mode. So earlier we had the mode just equal lines. Another option is to use lines plus markers. And now when we plot that, you can see that there's a dot as well as the line. This should make it very obvious why we say that line plots are just a variant of a scatter plot, because this is a scatter plot and a line plot essentially combined to each other. If we wanted just the scatter plot, we could just use markers as the mode and you would get a scatter plot of the information without the lines plotted through it. So that is mode, lines plus markers. If we want to change the width of a line, <clears throat> excuse me, this is where Plotly gets a little bit more complicated than something like ggplot, because we have to add the line argument and then a list of information. Now we'll come back to this list and talk about other things that can be in here, because this format is more efficient when you have lots of parameters to change, but it's a little cumbersome when you only have one. But this is what it looks like to change the width of a line to something like four. If you want to uh, if you want bolder lines, you could increase this number. If you want thinner lines, you can go ahead and decrease it. Now, of course, sometimes we want to change the way that a line looks, whether it's dashed or dotted or something like that. And so this is what I mean by it can, um, this list uh, format can allow you to more quickly add many parameters. So now we have two parameters in the same list and we've changed the dash argument here to dot. So we've got relatively wide lines, we've kept the markers, and then we've, we've drawn dashed, or I'm sorry, dotted lines between each point of the same um, measurement. Finally, we're going to go back to a wide format because I'm going to show you what it looks like if you need to mix and match these things or change the formatting for different lines in the same plot. We're going to start with kind of the same thing that we've done uh, we're going to start with, I'm sorry, the, the first graph that we made, just plotting variable A. And we're going to add a line argument in here with a list where we change the width to two. We're going to keep it a solid line, but we want the color of that line to be green. And now we're going to add a trace to say plot variable B. And in this list, we're going to set the width to four, dash to dash, and the color to gray, and so on and so forth. You can see that we now have lots of parameters going on in here. And this sort of um, should give you an example for, for what it looks like to make more complex graphs in Plotly. And here we go, something like this. It's a very ugly graph, but I really built this just to demonstrate what the code looks like uh, to start building very customized graphics. That's it for now. I hope you found this helpful. I'll see you next time. Thanks a lot once again to Kirby White for his contribution to this video. In case you want to learn more about interactive line plots in R, then you may check out the Statistics Globe website because on the website, Kirby White has recently published another tutorial in which he's explaining the R programming code that he has explained in this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can check it out there. And furthermore, if you have liked this video, we would be very happy if you leave us some positive feedback in the comments and make sure to subscribe to the Statistics Globe YouTube channel. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.